Hello everybody, this is HD Shaves here. I'm back in the video. Hope this finds you well and in good spirits. Well, with all this light pouring in the bathroom window, you would think that we're in the middle of a warm sunny day. But in fact, we are in winter, of course, and I think it's about two degrees Fahrenheit outside. Um, negative something in Celsius. And um, yeah, I'm gonna avoid going outside as much as possible today. We'll get more to the weather here in a bit. Yes, I am wearing a, a New York hot dog shirt. I decided to bust out one of the newer uh, t-shirts that somebody kindly sent me. The issue is I can't really wear these t-shirts outside at the moment because like I said, it's two degrees Fahrenheit. Um, but you know, I can wear them here in the bathroom to make these little videos. So this is the debut of the New York hot dog shirt, I believe. Uh, what are we gonna use today? Well, um, we've got this uh, Wolfman uh, synthetic brush that I've used a few times on this channel. Um, wanted to use a kind of scrubbier synthetic today, so we're going to be using that. Um, I guess first let's talk about the soap, which is Eternal Calamity from Silisky Soaps. I always thought that that was a very cool label. And Silisky is one of those uh, people that isn't really making shaving products anymore. Um, if I'm not mistaken, he still is doing sort of a wholesale uh, body soap, bath soap kind of business, but he's not in the shaving uh, realm much anymore. Um, which is too bad because this was one of the last things he released, this and another soap called Incense. And a lot of us really thought that those two were his, like, um, like that this was his magnum opus. Um, he had, he got off kind of on the wrong foot in the beginning in the shaving community, but as time went on, he ended up making something really great um, like this. So his soaps were always t uh, totally vegan, and I couldn't find the ingredients for the soap listed anywhere uh, because I looked it up and I last reviewed the soap in October 2020, which is kind of wild. But I looked at a write-up I did about the soap and I remembered, or I saw that um, there's a vegan substitute for lanolin in the soap, and additionally, there's less um, water um, in this compared to most artisan soaps. Additionally, there's a couple chemicals that help make it really firm. So this is hard as a rock, basically. Um, I, I think you would get a good amount of use out of it. But if you've been following me for a long time, you'll know that I haven't cracked into this tub yet because I have an additional um, tub over here, which has slowly been getting worn down over the years. And there's probably still, I don't know, another ounce or so in there. Um, in terms of the scent, I've, I've always had difficulty describing the scent. Um, the ones listed, let's read the label. Bergamot, Labdamum, um, Apoponix, and what's the other one? Juniper, right? So I've always had difficulty describing the scent. It's kind of sweet, but not cleanly sweet. Kind of woodsy, certainly a resinous component, but it's always been difficult for me to pick out individual notes. Uh, but I really like the scent. I, I, I think the scent is well known. So that's the soap we'll be using today. Finally, um, kind of as a joke, um, um, an online friend told me that he was really struggling to use this Gillette Red Tip. Um, he said that he just could never get a good shave out of it. And I said, okay, well, why don't you send it to me and I'll try it out. What you know, maybe there's something wrong with it because you never know what could have happened. Um, but as I later found out, he bought this razor from a very reputable source, and so I realized, well, there's probably not something wrong with it. Anyway, this video was sort of an advertisement um, <laughs> that he does not want this razor back, and I understand that. Um, so if anybody wants to buy this razor, I'll be happy to uh, be the middleman um, in between my friend and you. It's in really nice shape. The doors open as you would expect. The only thing with this razor is that there's some pitting um, on the underside of the base plate. If you're really interested, I'll of course be happy to send you more detailed photos. But other than that, it's in pretty nice shape and I don't think, um, I, I don't know how much um, my friend would like to sell this for, but I think it would be a reasonable price. So if you're interested in uh, buying that razor, um, just send me an email or something. Um, here's a brand new Persona Med Prep to go into this razor. Thank you, Frank. Uh, Frank is watching. He's been my uh, Persona Med Prep supplier, which I uh, appreciate very much. 
Okay, so we've got the blade loaded in there. Let's get some warm water on the face, and then we will start face lathering this Soliski soap. So I think today, um, I uh, let's let's first deal with the weather, shall we? So it's been very cold um, here and as well, I think, in other parts of the U.S. Um, pretty much ever since I returned on Monday, um, I was out of town uh, for the weekend, which I'll get into that in a minute. But yeah, pretty much ever. Um, I landed back Monday morning, and it's been quite cold um, since then. Um, it, had, it had been kind of steadily coming back up, um, you know, into uh, Thursday. Thursday was kind of half decent, and then Friday, today, it just snapped right back down. But um, it, it is really some sort of, you know, Arctic influence, and it's definitely messing with a lot of the U.S. Um, it's not just Chicago being... Um, super cold. So, um, like I said, um, I was traveling this weekend and um, got to go to Florida, which was the good thing. But um, unfortunately, the bad part was I was there for my uh, cousin's funeral, and um, that was um, that was a lot different than I would have um, expected um, because I wasn't particularly close um, with my cousin. Um, I think I had met him maybe um, a couple times in my life, and that's because even though he um, is technically at the same generational level, he's my second cousin, um, even though that's the case, um, he was 25 years older than me, so... I can kind of remember being a kid, um, going to some kind of holiday party, um, at his house, um, and maybe I met him a couple other times when I was really young, but I don't remember those, uh, times. So, um, yeah, it was a, it was a classy, nice funeral. I mean, I don't know how you can say a funeral is nice, but, um, it, it was probably the, like I said, I don't know, classiest one I had ever been to. Um, unfortunately, the past couple that I went to before that were kind of a little bit wild and kind of messy. And, you know, you'd hate to see that with a grieving family that then they're trying to deal with um, funeral logistics. Um, and, you know, I think because of that, that's really why I wanted to be there last weekend was to just try to help out the family and be there for support. Um, I like to think of a decent logistics guy. So if um, somebody needed something done, um, I was happy to go do it. But um, it, 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 you know, it was it was really sad because. Of course, my cousin died far too soon, um, and so that was a whole thing. And um, apparently, he he had told his wife. I'm not sure if he ever told his mom, but he told his wife, I guess, early on in their relationship that he feared that he would die young, um, which is kind of a wild thing to hear. Um, so that whole part was really rough and hard to see. And then, moreover, um, I got to see some kind of estranged family members that I hadn't seen in a very, very long time. Like, again, since I was a kid, um, one of those people being my kind of estranged uncle. He's, um, he's my mom's half, half brother, yeah, and then, um, but again, same kind of situation, is that he's, like, 20 years older than my mom is, um, and for some other reasons, we haven't seen him in a very long time, 
and that was really difficult to see him because um, I am not close with the with the uncle on my dad's side, which is to say that I don't really have any uncles left. Um, they've all passed, and so that was um, that was that was kind of difficult to see him. And the other kind of weird thing is that he looks just like um, my paternal, uh, maternal grandfather. So he looks just like my mom's dad. Um, and I never really got to know him because he was so, you know, he was so much older. Um, and so that was also kind of weird to look at my uncle and then see my grandfather in him. Um, so anyway, um, that was sort of my weekend and um, I'm looking forward to doing some more kind of reflection um, this weekend now that I'm through with the work, through with the work week and um, I don't have too busy of a weekend schedule. Okay, lather looks really nice. Let's go in with the first pass with the red tip. So this razor for a while was really one of my favorite um, vintage twist to opens. I think I could still stand by my belief that um, This is the smoothest vintage American twist open out there. Um, it uh, there are a couple uh, British razors that are maybe a little bit smoother from the vintage uh, Gillette world, but this one is pretty comfy. Um, I think somehow the aggression. The additional aggression compared to like a flare tip um, and also the weight help it because the when I use like a normal super speed it just kind of feels um, just feels kind of medium aggression but not really that comfortable in use like it it feels aggressive but it's not right so that's not a good thing So the only thing I found with this razor over the years is you just have to maintain a light touch. Because you can do a little damage um, if you're not careful. Not, not too much damage, but some. Okay, good. First pass done, we'll rinse and come back in for the second in just a moment. Pass number two with internal calamity. Second pass across the grain, mostly. Yeah, I'm glad I put in a fresh blade. feels much nicer than when I was using a slightly older one uh, a couple days ago. So um, not too much um, new stuff uh, coming into uh, my position these days. Uh, 
I am intentionally not buying anything new, um, which maybe I'll do a separate video talking about that. Um, but people have been very kind to still offer to send me samples of new things. And so I think, um, Without them, I really would have tried nothing new. But thus, thus far, it's been nice to just use the many things that I already own and um, Also, in the case of this razor, it's been nice to be somewhat helpful to people. Because I don't have a queue of new things piling up that I need to make a video with, um, it's nice to say, yeah, sure, send over the red tip and I can get to it straight away. Okay, second pass done, we'll rinse and come back for the final third pass. Third pass. Okay, third and final pass against the green, mostly. I guess let's actually do that then. Yeah, here I'm going real lightly with the razor. You don't necessarily need the, or at least I guess I don't necessarily need the kind of physical feedback of feeling the hair is cut um, because instead you can just listen to the audio feedback wow nice and when you listen to the audio you must <laughs> resist the temptation to push down more um, it's pretty simple concept to me now but it took me a while to really figure it out. Um, another kind of video idea is that I should talk about the different kinds of feedback that you can receive. With razors and they're definitely certain Characteristics that I prefer more. Um, so maybe that's a decent video idea for the future. And here, when I'm doing that kind of buffing thing, I'm barely gliding the razor over the surface. This is a surprisingly efficient razor or maybe my technique's gotten better <laughs> over the years. Um, that was always kind of my general thought uh, with most vintage razors is that unless you're
technique is really good. I would say probably on average you could get a easier, really close shave with a modern razor than a vintage one. You could do it more comfortably anyway. Um, but today this feels pretty good. I just missed one little spot right here. And we're going to call it there. Okay, I'm going to rinse and let's talk over post-shave in just a moment. Okay, I did my cold water rinse as usual and toweled off a little more than usual because I'm going to be using this aftershave sample from Saponificio Varecino. Thanks very much to Jeff for sending me a plethora of aftershave samples. I don't think he really watches these videos, but just in case he does, Jeff, thanks man. Um, so, this is the little kind of jelly, oh, well, there it goes. <laughs> I didn't quite mean to get that much out. Uh, but, yeah, it's kind of a jelly consistency, and um, this one is um, named in honor of the Dolomites, uh, Dolomites, uh, mountain range in the north of Italy, and it's kind of a floral, lavender, um, citrus kind of scent, and I must say it is surprisingly nice. Usually citrus is a little bit too um, cloying for me if it's just citrus, but this is a nice balance. And then lavender kind of usually isn't my thing, just on its own, so yeah, that's actually a really nice scent. Wow. Um, so Definitely try these uh, before you buy them because um, they're quite expensive. Um, okay, so let's do a quick recap of what we used. We used Siliski soaps, internal calamity. Really, I think his uh, magnum opus, and uh, if you have a chance to try this at some point, um, I think you'll be very pleased with the scent and also the base. We used the Wolfman uh, synthetic brush. I guess he's still selling and making these. I, I know at one time he had a second shape, so he was selling two shapes. Um, but um, I haven't heard too much about those lately. We use the Dolomiti aftershave. And then finally, um, this vintage A2 date code Gillette Red Tip Super Speed. So if you're interested in purchasing this, um, I'm sure... We can sell it to you for a reasonable rate. Just uh, send me an email. Okay, thank you all so much if you made it this far in the video. As always, for now, this has been HD Shaves. Take care. We'll see you again next time. Goodbye.